Hey everybody, Scott O'Green here. Welcome to my 100 Days of Making Comics Volume 3 wrap-up video. It's the uh, comic creating adventure created by Kevin Cross that says every day for 100 days put at least a half hour towards your comic creating, uh, your personal project, and then post to social media about it. Um, it's actually been a couple weeks now that I completed my 100 days, but still felt like I wanted to do a final kind of wrap-up video uh, here on YouTube with all of you folks here. I uh, had a little bit of leftover footage just from random things that I shot during the course of everything that I thought I'd use. Um, I'll do my top 10 ways, uh, uh, kind of helpful tips on completing your 100 days here in a little bit, um, but just wanted to give an intro and say hey. Uh, also share with you my plans for the future of my kind of uh, what I want to do for my portion of the channel here on I'd Rather Be Drawing. Bit of a travel channel meets an art channel. Uh, tentatively called Drawing Inspiration where I kind of explore the new area that I live. Kind of showing you here now. And then freeze frame on a different uh, part or experience. And then uh, we can uh, draw it together type of a thing. So that's what I'm thinking as far as that goes. Um, I did want to share with you just other cool stuff that I come across along the way. Uh, interesting sights and sounds. For instance, this thing coming up here in a little bit might be weird to y'all, but I just thought it was really cool. When we're out hiking, we end up getting underneath some power lines, and the sound of them was just really, really impressive. Kind of scary, kind of spooky, but pretty cool. Check it out. You know, if any of you are watching this, you're probably familiar with Jake Parker, and you're probably familiar with the idea of the creative bank account. The idea of drawing inspiration, as well as just giving somebody something for the daily, what do I draw today? Me giving an answer to that, that we can draw together. I also just want to show different things that kind of can help fill people's creative bank accounts, whether, like I said before, it's sights or sounds. So, listen to this guy. I love this instrument that he plays. I'll find out next time what it's called. This is at the Bellingham Farmer's Market at uh, in Bellingham, Washington, downtown. It's not a huge farmer's market, but they got a lot of good stuff there, including some good music. And they kind of post at different ends, and every so often they just sort of merry-go-round shuffle and go to a different corner and, and keep playing. But these guys were especially pretty fun and drew a big crowd. I don't see them all the time, so I'm not sure if I'll see them again or not. But it was a cool thing to uh, catch a glimpse of. I'm sure the first few episodes will take a little bit of experimentation of uh, drawing inspiration here on I'd Rather Be Drawing's uh, YouTube channel, but uh, I like exploring around, I like sharing that experience with people and not knowing a lot of folks up here and liking to create art and go to these different places, it just seems natural to sort of combine these things. Like a donut shop, who doesn't want to come draw at a donut shop at some point? And if you're going to go to one here in Bellingham, you're going to want to go to Rocket Donuts. It's a lot of fun. Check out the walls. They're great. Uh, but anyway, this is kind of like the idea of, of what I want to do. Uh, share with you guys different things. So um, if it's not something that you're used to seeing every day, show you a little bit of glimpse into things that I'm getting to explore. And uh, encourage other folks to do the same. Uh, I love kind of peeking into other people's worlds as well. Um, but to get along to my sort of top 10 list of ways to successfully complete your 100 days of making comics. Like I said before, this is my volume three. Uh, this is the first time that I did the videos uh, to do the challenge and the first time that I really 
kept myself accountable. I did the challenge twice before in a much more loosey-goosey way, still posting to social media, um, but doing it really kind of at the time what I could do. I wasn't ready to be making the videos uh, along with building the habit. Um, I needed to kind of build into it. And it took uh, two times for me to um, get myself in the place where I thought I was ready to really be able to accomplish the 100s by the letter of the law with the everyday 100 continuous days um, uh, and and make a video uh, for every single day as well not just a post which you can do um, it's really just about keeping yourself accountable to social media and they strongly suggest the videos um, but that's something that we'll get into here so let me go ahead and jump in and talk to you about how to successfully complete your 100 days of making comics. First, start with watching other people's 100 days of making comics videos. Um, it's a great way to learn what it is, what to expect of yourself, what other people are doing, um, things to not do as you see them suffer with um, you know, high production qualities that are taking long upload times and it's you know cutting into their sleep and they're getting sick. There's a lot you can learn with both what to do uh, to be successful and what not to do. Um, so start at the top. Look up Kevin Cross, the creator. Uh, they're fascinating to watch. It's a really good series. Watch them all. And you'll start seeing all the other people in the comments and that he's recommending. And it just kind of funnels from there. So number one, watch other 100 videos. Uh, number two, if you can, something that I did not do. Uh, is start with a script. Uh, my particular run on my volume three, uh, I'll get into kind of after this of what I accomplished and what I was hoping to accomplish, but I did not start with a script on uh, the story that I was kind of thought at the beginning of this was going to be like the main drive of what I was going to do. Um, if you don't have one, I, I don't let that stop you from doing 100s. But if you are able to sort of get yourself together a script first and then do your 100s, I think that that could be a positive thing for your videos and for your audience um, and that sort of a thing. So that's my rule number two. If you can, start with a script uh, and then do, start your 100s. Uh, number three, notify, notify loved ones. Uh, and I let my wife know. I let my brother know. Uh, I even let my boss know at work. And to put it so that people can understand who, I know they have trouble understanding sometimes what we're doing here, um, but I told my boss that I was taking an online class. It was 100 days long and required daily participation. Um, not to get out of work, I still put in a lot of long hours, but I don't have kids and I don't have a whole bunch going on, but I work really hard on my personal stuff when I'm not at work and that's hard for people to understand and they really want to mess with your schedule a lot of times when they know that you don't have kids and and other things like that so I let them know what it is to me is it's class it's school it's education it's bettering myself so that's what I framed it as and I let my wife know I let my brother know that I'm doing these things. It's not me cutting myself off from you guys for 100 days, but just letting you know that I have to hold myself accountable to this, and it's really important to me. And, uh, you know, it just kind of lets everybody know. It draws a line in the sand. Not as a confrontational thing, but just as you have expectations for yourself. I, you know, explain to my brother and to my wife, you know, the same idea that this is something like if I paid to go to school and take a class to better myself, it's the same idea to me. So that really kind of lets people know how important it is to you. So number three, notify loved ones. Number four, join the Facebook group and participate. It's the 100s. Um, I hope it's okay that I kind of promote that, but they really only kind of accept you if you're serious about doing it, which that in itself um, is a big helpful I don't know, a, a big helpful proponent to complete this challenge is they expect a lot from you if you're going to join the group. Um, they want you to complete it. They want you to do it for yourself, but if you're going to kind of rub elbows um, with the greats, uh, they want to make sure that you can hang, which in my opinion is pretty understandable with a lot of art um, groups on Facebook. Um, 
and they just become kind of art dumps. And I try to be present in different things, but internet stuff, community doesn't come naturally to me, so it kind of forced me to participate as well. Um, but that group on Facebook is the 100s. That's T H E E 100s. The 100s. Um, and it's a great group of folks, men and women, um, old and young, who are all at different levels creating comics and sharing that with each other. And there, um, again, you get to see other people on their journey. Uh, for me, it was kind of hard during my 100s to fully participate in all of everybody's 100s that were currently going on. You sort of touch base with people here and there. Um, but I had to have a little bit of tunnel vision on when I was doing it. But when you check in there every day, you know, you can do the actual work and then make the video and post a video. But until you share it to that Facebook group, it kind of feels like you haven't quite finished for the day. Um, so join the group. That's number four. Um, number five, like I said before, this is my volume three of doing this. And um, I've, I just did posting to Instagram before, not even video posting, um, but just you know, like pictures of my artwork at the time. And then if I didn't have something interesting enough to show, it was hard to make a post that day. And so then some days I wouldn't post and yada, yada, yada. Um, but um, the sort of leaders of the 100 do recommend doing the videos. Um, a lot of them even take a step further and say, you know, they recommend doing the YouTube videos. Those are kind of better for engagement. I won't disagree and everything, but I found a lot of use out of uh, my method for this one was that I was creating content for YouTube, for IGTV, and for Facebook. Um, which for me, I, both to kind of spread it around to create content on different channels, um, but also for ease of use. So on different days, um, I could kind of post in different ways depending on uh, what I was actually kind of physically able to do. Um, so make videos they keep better engagement also like a cool thing about the videos is like when I would think I'd get stressed out because I'd work on everything but think, what am I going to talk about today just I, I wrote more I drew more you know but inevitably when you get on there it's almost therapeutic you begin to kind of talk and open up about um, things that are going well or things that are bothering you or your motivations and really if you stop and just come up with simple sort of topic ideas like uh, what's my favorite superhero? So today while you watch me, you know, work on my comic, you know, my super favorite superhero is yada yada, and this is why. And then you ask everybody, what's your favorite superhero? And then there's engagement down below. So it's just a good way for people to see you and meet you, and in an age where it's not just people are buying or following the artwork, but they're interested in the artist, um, it's a way for you to let people in. And Honestly, people are interested in all types of personalities and seeing that online. So make the videos be yourself. Along with that, like I said, that leads into my number six um, tip for completing your 100 days of making comics, which is keeping it simple, the old KISS method. Um, so using live feeds and using Instagram TV, um, simple uploads like that. I saw a lot of people from like other people's 100s, like I said before, that dealt with like super long um, upload times and it really caused a lot of problems for them and uh, I just, I didn't want to deal with that. And you had people that were doing really cool stuff, like really high production for all their things and they have, you know, really cool graphics and titles and all that and people who have that knowledge to be able to do that. Um, and even the people who have that knowledge to do that, it was still stressful for them at times to kind of keep at that production level. Well, I knew I don't have that production level. I'm not a very tech savvy guy at all. Um, I don't try to fight it tooth and nail, but it just happens. It just doesn't come naturally to me. So when I kind of learn the basic function of whatever upload to YouTube or this or that, um, I just kind of go with ease of use. And to record just like a five, uh, I'm sorry, five minute video and then upload it to Instagram TV, which I'm already engaged on quite a bit. That did not take very long. Um, it uploaded quickly. It was easy to do. If you watch my videos over there, it's at Mr. Green Draws, Mr. Green Draws, and you'll see I had just like a sketchbook with the title written on it, and I'd flip the page, and then I flipped the page, and like that was kind of my opening credits. 
and honestly for me who I am the type of art I do honestly it fits it works out really well and it was kind of my um, on-the-go way of doing stuff and making sure that I could I could make the video every day and post it every day and not deal with late night creation where you know you get done at 1 a.m. and then end up staying up to like 3 a.m. just making and posting the video uh, like that's kind of a best case scenario at times um, so using live feeds on Facebook, um, YouTube even, like that seems easier to a large extent. Just, you know, start working on your thing while you're drawing, you know, sketching out your stuff and just hit the live thing for five minutes to an hour. It doesn't even matter. Uh, a lot of folks, I think, find a lot of success in that. Um, none of us are always making a hundred, you know, super engaging, perfect, beautiful videos, but, you know, just make a hundred videos that's all that counts is just showing up every day um, that kind of leads into my number seven tip um, which is be travel ready uh, I know a lot of people like their studios and their safe spots at home and they want to just be able to create there and that's where they can get into their thing uh, but for me life happens and part of like I said before me telling my loved ones that this is something I'm gonna be doing every day I wasn't cutting myself off from them so if I want to get stuff done, you know, family coming in town, uh, that happened a couple times and, you know, you might not get back to that safe spot until, you know, one or two in the morning when everything's going on and you're traveling and, or you're on the road and you're not in that space at all. So you have to be able to create when you're not um, in your create zone, in your, in your home or studio or whatnot, um, whether that's having a project sketchbook um, that you keep all of your notes in and all your stuff in and know that, okay, well, I can't work on the physical page tonight because I'm going to be gone, so I'll get my sketchbook and thumbnail out the next few panels because I know those still need some work. Um, knowing that you might not be at home with your you know whole computer set up and your whole tripod set up with everything, all you have is your phone, so you're just going to need to record something on the go. How do you do that, you know? have your headings written in a sketchbook and, you know, be able to just sort of film that, you know, at a coffee shop or in your car after you get coffee before you go to work, like, you know, I did a few times. So my advice there is be travel ready. Um, it'll make you a lot less insane. Uh, number eight, uh, know what you're working on. So before you go and sit down for the day, whether it's, you know, if you know that you're going to be creating in the morning, then think about the night before. If you know you're going to create in the evening, think about it during the day. Um, I had several projects that I was working on, kind of a three-pronged effect, um, which was helpful and hurtful in different ways, pros and cons or whatnot. I don't regret that I did it that way, but there are pros and cons of that. But um, whether you have one project or many, uh, knowing what you're going to work on when you finally have the time and you're going to fit in that half hour and really man all you got tonight is just that 30 minutes you really need to know um, what you're going to be working on almost even more important is when you have more time an hour two hours three hours four hours don't go okay well i have more time tonight so i'll figure it out it's almost even more important for that time to know what you're going to work on to really be able to make use of that time if you know you have to put in a week long of just 30 minutes honestly that doesn't get you very far so if on sunday you can put in four hours you got to make that count so when you start it on week two you can really go okay i did a week long of everyday work and i really see you know some progress um, progress feeds motivation it's not the other way around you have to kind of feed the monster a little bit more and then it'll start you know pushing you forward so know what you're going to work on before you sit down to it otherwise you're going to get page fright you're not going to know what to do you're going to get frustrated it's my advice because i burned myself many times on this so know what you're working on uh, number nine uh, maybe an obvious one maybe not an obvious one is take care of your health watching other people's 100 days you'll see a lot of people get sick during their 100 days of making comics um, like a lot of people, <clears throat> be, excuse me, because you are going to miss sleep. Um, you are going to not eat right. You know, you're, you're going to mess up things as far as like keeping your body healthy. And I'm not a health nut, but 
I mean, you got to eat good. You got to move around. You know, you have to do these things to, you know, feel good as a human and to be productive. And if you want to be able to sit at a table for a really long time or show up every day, even when you're exhausted, to accomplish something, you have to keep yourself healthy. Uh, it's kind of an athletic, you know, sort of marathon undertaking that you're going to do if you're going to do 100 days. It's not an easy thing to do. And it's a really fun thing to do, and when you get going in it, um, you just want to keep going further, uh, which is an awesome aspect of it. It just, like I said before, progress feeds motivation. But you have to be healthy. Don't get yourself super sick because you're getting two hours of sleep. Once again, take it from me and my mistakes. But that kind of comes with planning and balance, communicating with your uh, loved ones, your work, um, but you have to take care of yourself once again as much as you can because there will be nights when you're only going to get two hours of sleep to be able to get done what you need to and or want to get done. Um, so do the best you can because uh, you can't get much done if you're bedridden. So uh, take care of your health. Number 10 is kind of the most obvious thing and you can either take 1 through 9 into account or ignore all of them. But make sure you do number 10 begin. Honestly, you can't complete it if you don't start. I know that sounds obvious, but even with my tips on, you know, watch other people's videos and, and if you can have a script ready and all that, like I didn't have my script ready on this one part of the project for mine. And that's part of the reason why I forced myself to do a 100 days is because it wasn't coming to me and I needed to push myself forward. Um, so sometimes you really just need that push. Uh, you can't always, you know, as, as much preparation as you do, you're never going to like be ready. There's always going to be stuff. You're oh, well, summer's a busy time. Well, oh, well, then Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, well, October's our favorite month. Well, we're going to have vacations at this time. There's always going to be something. A hundred days is a pretty long time. It's a short time in the grand scheme of things, but in everyday life, a hundred days is a long time. And you're not going to have a hundred consecutive free days it's not going to happen so at some point you just have to begin jump in with both feet and begin all right so with the conclusion of my first top 10 video i guess it's official i am now a youtuber uh, i have been flipping through showing you the different projects that i worked on uh, during the course of this 100s uh, which was the selling of uh, Isabel Crane's comic Die in Your Sleep, uh, working on the finished production of Mr. Green's Monster Zine, and then the third part was uh, getting October off the ground and going. Um, also, kind of flipping through the sketchbook, showing you Indie Gutter and What's Your 100. A couple other things that throughout the course of this 100 um, I got kind of inspired to make. So it's like two other projects that kind of happened because of this that are in the making so stay tuned on that and yep just some interesting colors and shapes wanted to go out with some pumpkins it's end of October beginning of November uh, what I like to call Halloween um, for me Halloween just keeps going so thought I'd share a little bit more of that with you guys did want to say thanks for you guys joining me on this and my other videos on my journey to be in the comic creator that I want to be. Um, it's fun and interesting to share that with all of you folks. And I've already met a lot of cool people doing this and excited to meet more. Um, a lot of cool experiences to be had out there. So I encourage you guys out there, whether it's for comics or anything else, um, get involved in a 100 days. Find a community and better yourself. All that stuff that you've been wanting to learn for a while take this as an opportunity to get started um, so yeah thanks again i think that's everything i got for you um, check all the links below uh, the people i talked about kevin cross jake parker where to find me on instagram uh, mr green draws that's mr dot green draws uh, that's where you'll find all my inktober stuff that just got wrapped up um, links to my etsy shop uh, all that good stuff, so if you get a chance, please like, comment, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff, wherever you find me. I sure do appreciate it, so like I said, stay tuned, a lot of good stuff on the horizon. Uh,
keep a lookout for my new YouTube show, Drawing Inspiration. Going to have a lot of fun with that one. And i uh, got some new comic projects coming up, as well as some things to get posted for sale. So thanks for uh, catching up with me, everybody. Peace out.